when I have a hard day, uh, I like to go in the shower and reflect. And I think, you know, I think we've all done this. We all, um, all these other have that- those moments where we're in the shower silently to ourselves and we just kind of go through all the hard, hard stuff again, including the arguments where it's like, yeah, I could have said that better. I had this in the back of my mind. Yeah, I could have, I, I could have done that. I could have said that I got to be better next time. But, you know, the next day I just kind of try and be better. What I don't do is make a four part film series <laughs> trying to prove my point, despite throwing in as many straw mans, as many made up scenarios, as many <laughs> cliches, as many, not even Hollywood cliches. These are Hallmark cliches thrown into, into, into so many of the, of these like really, really poorly made moments, man, the first, like, this is like in the first, I think 10 minutes of the film, which hard to say where the start of the movie was because there were like five intros of the same God's not dead montage. I don't know if it was a fathom events thing, or maybe just my theater, but anyway, no, th- dude. yeah, no, that was uh, that was mine too. I-, I didn't know where the actual thing started either because they go through like the, I don't know if it was like the David A.R. White intro or was yeah. part of the movie or what, which was not a good, <laughs> like, but in any case, like the scene where I think one mother is dropping kids off at the homeschool and did you notice there were like, Steve, did you notice there were like hard, like cuts, like three cuts per second in that, in that one scene? I don't mean to be so detailed. I rarely do this, but like the cutting, the, the editing was so bad in that simple exchange. It's literally just mom drops off kid at homeschool and then two mothers discuss innocuous things. But I swear to God, it was putrid editing. Right. Like it was like the only other time where I noticed something that bad was the opening scene in the Mulan remake where it's just the kid doing backflips in a Chinese village. And it's like cutting like every millisecond. I was like, Jesus Christ, this is so bad. And that is par for the course for this movie. Did, did, did ev- you feel like here's my question. I, yeah. I, 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 I didn't lobby this complaint towards the movie because I don't know who to blame if it's actually the movie or my theater. Did did the movie look like it was zoomed into you? Yes. Did it feel like a traditional like um, aspect ratio of like reg- of like standard movies? This I, I forget thing the felt names. like it was shot in Zoom. Yeah, it felt the, the characters felt unnervingly big, like unnervingly. Like I felt too close to certain things. Like it was very <laughs> odd, and I didn't want. I didn't know if it was the, the movie's issue or a masking issue <laughs> you, in my theater. You know, a movie's got problems when you have to make sure your screening and your theater wasn't messing up, and it wasn't. It's like <laughs> Candyman all over again. The damn intro. You know what I mean? I'm like, am I nuts or is this? Because I'm like, it just looks really weird. It looks like they. And Dom brings up a better point than I did. It looks like it was almost filmed in four three as opposed to sixteen yeah, nine yes. widescreen. I, I actually like I'm so glad you brought this up because I remember looking at the sides I'm like this is weird like this is boxier than like a typical movie I haven't been to the theaters it's in a boxy. while but I can that's tell. a good way it's, yeah. a, it's boxy it's like like has this film been formatted to fit this screen like what is going on <laughs> <laughs> zoomers won't get that joke but anyway um, no, they won't <laughs> like it's like dude we already like Discount Chad Kroger from Nickelback, aka David A.R. White, already has a massive face. I don't need to see more of it. But in any case, uh, yeah, let's get to the uh, meat of this, which is that this is a really poorly done film on so many levels, technically, as we were just saying, but also like screenwriting wise. I'm not even touching like the po- politics of it and, and the dishonesty and the misrepresentation. I'm not even talking about any of that. The way that they go about making these points are so like, parody level bad the the antagonists here are so unapologetically like cartoonishly evil where it's like you might have had because the whole point like well one point is that you're trying they're trying to make is that yeah it's got this you've got the uh, the elite this political elite making all these decisions for us and we the people are, are butt out of it and uh, it's like okay cool if you want to portray that have them be like Kevin Spacey esque conniving, or like House of Cards, or like whatever, something something cool where it's like, okay, yeah, I I feel, I sense the 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 evil, I sense the 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 real politician stuff here. No, instead, it's literally like the two the two main bad guy politicians are like, 
<laughs> yeah, this this mom probably uh, switches the bags over, uh, you know, changes the trash over at NASA. Like that's literally a line. That's a line. Um, yes, because apparently one of the defendants was uh, it was she's uh, she's religious, but she works at NASA, which is tr just cool. Like that's uh, you know whatever, and it's it's just repeatedly that level of we don't know how to make real arguments these are all made up in our head we've never been in a real conversation this with movie real people in particular who is attacking homeschool. homeschool who is attacking homeschool you know what i mean Look, was this written by somebody who was homeschooled and never left the house like <laughs> you know because the crux of the movie the plot of the movie is essentially what happens is a government worker comes in to monitor a homeschool class. Of course, right in the middle is David A.R. White is giving a theology lesson in class with Bible verses and everything. And the social worker doesn't like what she sees from the religion to the fact that they're not learning common core curriculum. So then it launches into a legal battle of a bunch of these homeschooled parents who are under the same attack where if they do not conform to common core, um, you know, protocol and everything that they're going to be fined a thousand dollars a day for each day of non-compliance and then it's reverend dave over here who reverend yeah reverend dave played by david a.r white who then starts to spearhead this like dc legislature you know that rules of religious freedom this is not an issue and it's even more damning that today on twitter that like these two representatives from the coalition of homeschooling that this movie is attacking they came out and said we were never contacted by this production company for our likenesses to be used in this movie we were not given any sort of warning until the day the movie came out that this is how we were portrayed and it's and they and it's a long thread i sent it's both of you gentlemen i even retweeted it for visibility's sake but beyond all that too the the, the core of this move the core of these movies that is always the most offensive to me is that in a time when muslims face senseless cruelty just going about their day-to-day -day life and when jewish people see their temples defaced with anti-semitic slurs the god's not dead franchise swoops in like a bat out of hell and reminds us that the dominant religion in america by a country mile is under the greatest attack and it this is persecution complex gone berserk it's a is fetish. what this movie is it's a it, it's a persecution fetish nobody loves to be persecuted more or the thought of persecution than christians nobody loves it more they're crucifying themselves from time to time man like seriously <laughs> they love the victim and they loved it they, they love the victim card here and and it, bad enough too what dom was saying and how these villains are not well written at all nobody's well written you know you know what was really offensively hilarious too in this movie was Paul Kuo, who plays the movie's lone Asian character, mm. Martin. This character, it only shows up when they need somebody to wax poetic about the virtues of America from an immigrant point of view. And he, in the most jigonistic ways, this guy spouts American history and these flowery American ideals. At one point, the actual line he says is, quote unquote, the constitution is an awesome document. And Look, hey, let, let me just oof. say, let me just let me go off of that. It, it's it's offensively bad. This is the model minority stereotype, not even just stereotype, but it's a it's a real thing um, that is taken advantage of by conservative circles. But let me let me actually say this back when I was younger. I, so I, I was in the Catholic school system for 18 years, grade school all the way to high school. I'm I've I've been through this shit more than both of you guys. I don't, actually, Joe, I don't know if have you had much Catholic schooling. Four years in high school, yeah, exactly. But uh, honestly, in some ways, high school me and it all worse. fell apart. It all fell apart. But yeah, let me just say, Paul Quo, uh, aka Martin, aka the the Asian dude who just hates China and loves loves America. Um, that was actually me. I'm not even I'm not even lying. It, that was actually straight up me when I was in Catholic school. Straight up, you know. I, I mean, I, I, when I was eight, the the nine eleven happened. That was absolutely me. Then I, I met. I, like I identified real... as Republican in high school. We all have our flaws. Yeah, but then I met like real people and like. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what I, happened. Dom, I'm, Dom. I'm, not, I'm not. Can I just say real quick? I I have a yeah. friend as well. I'm not going to say who they are. You know what race they are. I don't want to put their information out there and everything in case this review blows up or whatever. Uh, and people from my school end up seeing it. But I have a friend 
who went through a very similar thing you did. Did Catholic school their entire life. Mm -hmm. The minute they went to college and actually joined clubs and met people outside of that bubble, they completely changed the way they think. You're not the only one. <laughs> And when I said meet real people, I'm not saying Christians or Catholics aren't real people. Get off your, your persecution fetish. But like, uh, it's it's more like, yeah, it's a bubble. It's a hard bubble. And every every group, every ideology has that. But in America, it's historically, it's historically bad. It's historically entrenched. And it's historically bullying against Oh, so many, so many groups of minorities that it's honestly quite disgusting. And the fact this movie wants to reinforce those things. We don't have time to go through every single bad faith argument that this movie shoves in there. There are YouTube essays who will make four part, four hour video essays on this. And I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. But like, dude, at the heart of it, it is just so misrepresentative. And honestly, it didn't hit me harder than when I think it was towards the end. I think it was like the penultimate scene or, you know, around there where the um, the religious, the good, the good guy uh, congressman who was helping Reverend Dave um, and he, they show like, hey, I want you guys to see something. Everyone talks about the Statue of Liberty, but here in the Capitol, they have the, there's this statue that no one talks about. It's called the Freedom Statue, and it was made by a slave. But you know what? He was born, even though he was born a slave, by the time he finished the statue, he was he was be, he was a free man because the Emancipation Proclamation made him a free man. And because this country has fought for freedom and set slaves free, this country is worth fighting for. So, Reverend Dave, go back in there and fight for your religious freedom. That's one way of twisting it now, isn't it? <laughs> Reminder, uh, that... yes, America is one of the very few countries in the world that has fought a war to end slavery. That was our fucking civil war. We fought ourselves. We fought literally the entirety our... of the country down to end slavery because we did that. The sins of the founding fathers did that. Founding fathers, some great ideas. Also made some two-thirds compromises. Go ahead, Steve. I am glad you brought that line up because I didn't touch on that in my review, but that was a sickening line. The line that I addressed in my review, besides the whole, you know, the Constitution's an awesome document. Who's going to disagree with such a such a such verbiage? But like, you there's know only twenty seven amendments to it. That's fine. You know what line that nailed me? You know what line that just floored me? Um, and, and, and again, it was brought up by that Coalition for Homeschooling that, that took to Twitter today to lambast this movie, rightfully so, for their misrepresentation, was that at one point when they're it, – it's, it's towards the climax, when there's a, several people that are talking about the elect – like why they elect to homeschool their kids. They've got one character say, one mother says – she justifies homeschooling their child because it quote unquote protects them from receiving some immunizations. No, no, no. She, here's how she, I think I remember exactly what she said. She said, I get to choose my child's immunizations. It's a, it's, I'm pro choice. And she doesn't say I'm pro choice, but she says, like, I get to choose or like I have the freedom to choose which immunizations. I'm like, that's a that's an angle certainly in fact that whole scene it was like rapid fire disinformation i was like holy shit <laughs> um oh yeah no 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 no. okay you know what okay i don't want to i don't want to just try to dismantle <laughs> is politics this why arguments facebook the whole time. went down yesterday because so many people were posting about the movie that it was like hey, disinformation disinformation <laughs> here's another one here's another one where uh they were saying i don't want to put i want to homeschool my kid because public schools they're they're poorly funded. There's school shootings. There's school shooter drills. They're they're violent and uh, all these things. It's like, yeah. So you admit there's a problem. Yeah, pub, pub, public schools they they do have problems. Com common Core. Hey, as as someone who went to school with a lot of educators at North Central, yeah, Common Core is a serious problem. Like it, it is, is kind of messed up. No, you're not I'm, getting I'm, an I'm, argument I'm, from me on that. Yeah, I'm with the I'm kind of with the movie in a way on like yeah, Common Core freaking sucks, but like, d d I don't think the solution is completely separating your child from the rest of the community and the rest of like basic interaction to, to home, to, you know, just, just pull away completely. It's like, have the gumption to participate and make change. Literally it's the, you know, it's the joke, be the change you want to see in the world. And uh, on, on top of that, I also want to say, 
Uh, I also want to mention that we, we're not completely shitting on homeschooling, right? If you you have no. the choice to homeschool your kid, that's perfectly fine. I'm I offended have for the... people. I'm offended for people that do take the practice yeah. of homeschooling, and I'm offended for like this coalition that I keep mentioning and stuff like that that have Joe, to damage control this mess because Joe, nobody was nobody was tweet? making any controversial yeah, no, I, I, points I show, about. I, I showed it. I showed it already when you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. you. Nobody was making any controversial sweeping loss. You know, legislature to abolish homeschooling before this. This is an incredible non-issue. I I have multiple friends who are homeschooled. And they're perfectly fine, normal people. It's they're they're cool, they're fine, but they're not trying to. Not trying to I have, homeschooling uh, yeah. has not crossed my mind in about two years. The last time it did was the episode when they meet the South of the South Park when they have the homeschooled kids. That was the last <laughs> time homeschooling even crossed my damn mind. Truthfully, was yeah, what was that? Um, oh man, I've, but what. We'll, We'll go towards the wrap up here and we'll end with your little video snippet here. But I just want to, this is my final point on here. And I'll give my star rating. The thing that I can't, that I've never been able to rationalize with these God's Not Dead movies. There's a lot of things I've never been able to rationalize with these movies, but here's one of the ultimate ones. Where is the entertainment value in, in a movie like this? This is, this movie is made for people. And, and it's sad because the elder generation of people who may indeed, indeed live a healthier, more fruitful life than the next generation, they would rather waste their precious hours of the day on cable news, Fox News intake, and then go to the theater and pay money to see their political biases you know, hammered home in a flag waving movie full of misrepresentations. Oh, and Judge Janine Pirro is in it too. This is the second hey, movie she's been in this series. Credit where credit is due. She belongs on TV. She was probably the best actor out of this entire she is. roster. High key, she is like, the just best acting. actress. Yeah, it's in like, this, yeah, okay, she's got movie. the attitude of a judge. Sure, yeah, that works. And, and, and finally, I just wanna say this, on top of this movie being repugnant to its very core, there's nothing engaging about a slew of actors that are reciting political diatribes to one another while fighting a battle against homeschooling that has something in common like people putting marijuana in hair Halloween candy or people committing voter fraud for funsies. It's a problem that doesn't exist at the end of the day. This is my first half star review in three years. Well deserved for God's Not Dead, We the People.